Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're going to be discussing middlewares in ASP.NET. We're going to be explaining how do they work and why do we need them. So let's get started. So let us understand how this will work. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be extending the flow of an ML API call and then we're going to be seeing how middleware will actually affect this. So what I'm going to have here is I'm going to say this is my controller and I'm going to have a user and then I'm going to have different actions inside my controller. This could be like if this is like a products controller, we can say get all products action. We're going to have another one to get a specific product. We're going to have one to add. We're going to have another one to delete, etc. So let's say these are our main actions. So what happens here whenever we're doing a request? So the user will basically do a request. It will come to the controller. The controller then it will find the right endpoint or basically the right actions. And then what it does, it will take this request and it will route it to this action. So this is how actually it will work whenever we have like certain actions. So it will hit first the controller, then from the controller, it will be directed to the actions that we currently have. And for example, for different controllers, we can have different actions, etc, etc. Where does middleware comes into place? And how does the middleware help us in order for us to have a much more better user experience when it comes to actually building our API and basically have a more streamlined approach when it comes to adding different functionality to our APIs. So a middleware is basic specifically within the ASP.NET Core system is we can think about it as a building blocks. So let me make this a bit smaller so we can explore these building blocks here. So let us understand how these middleware works. So let's say this is my controller and then I'm going to have, as we said before, my action. But these are not the only two services which is going to be running whenever a request is actually executing. If we go back to the source code, or actually if we go to the source code and let me open my normal program.cs, if we take a look here, we can see that there is something called HTTPS redirection. We have the authorization, we have map controllers. So these are also being executed whenever a request is coming in. So for example, let's take it one by one. We're going to have the HTTPS redirection. We're going to have the authorization and we're going to have the controller mapping so we have all of these actually running simultaneously whenever there is a request coming in so request comes in it will verify the https uh, connection to it if we are enabling http then it will go to the authorization and then once it goes to the authorization it will go to the controller mapping it will find the right controller once it finds the right controller it will redirect that the request to the action so we can see this is basically like a layered cake where the request comes in from the biggest one and it start to propagate slowly slowly to the uh, lowest uh, not the lowest but basically to the main end at the end so it will be something like this. So this will be the main mapping for our action. So an, a, a request comes in. The request will have to go through all of these different layers. So it's going to go through HTTPS direction, authorization, controller mapping, controller and action. And then it will navigate back. So once it finished from the action, we got the response. It will navigate back to the controller. If we need to add anything to it, then it will go back to the controller mapping. It will pass back through all of these different layers that it went into in order for it to be returned back to the user as a response. So we can see this is like a layer cake and this basically allows us to see the flow of our application how it's gonna work but the main item here that we want to focus on is these items so we can see here that once a request is being processed from one into the other it's not it's not directly closed it is basically layered on top of each other so all of these different requests are being actually mapped one on top of the other so we can see that my request comes here first then it goes to here then it goes to here and then to the controllers and then to the actions and then from the actions, then we can back the response all the way down to the end of the end of the response. So we can see that all of these are actually working in sequence. So th that does not mean that once it reaches the authorization, we can directly close it. No, the door will stay open until the full request has been processed and then it will return back. And basically middleware means that we can actually intercept the call before it actually reached the controller or before it actually reached the action in order for us to execute some kind of a logic. It can be either on the way in or it could be on the way out. So that's going to be the main flexibility of it. So we can actually do some checks on the request before it hits the actual action where the business logic is going to be executing or once the business logic has been executed and we want to actually return back the response and this is going to be the main power of middleware where basically we are able to adjust the middleware to fit our needs based on whatever requirements that we have so for example if i want to add some kind of an error handling middleware let's say i have my application up and running and there is an exception which i did not cater for and i want to for example create a middleware so it will actually capture any unhandled exceptions and once it handles all of these unhandled exceptions it will return like a graceful error rather than returning like a 500 error with like a stack trace working of our application so what i can do is i can for example here 
let's make this a bit higher create a new middleware which basically intercept let's make this a bit smaller i can create a new middleware and this middleware will actually intercept the request so i can make it error middle, global error middleware and it will actually check if there is any types of error inside my response it will actually directly intercept it and then actually send back a graceful error rather than sending any random errors that we might face and this is going to be the main power of middlewares where we can actually add it wherever we want and we're basically able to execute it on any level of request coming into our application so with this we can see how this will be with the, with this we'll be able to see how middlewares are going to be a key role into having a much more robust web apis so now that how we have understood how this will actually work if we take a look at our user controller action, we can think of a middleware as a new layer, which we're going to come into place before it actually hits the controller. And basically the middleware will basically do some work, then it will actually send it to the controller. And then with the output, the middleware will be able to also catch it. And then from the controller, it will go back to the middleware and then back to the user. So this is going to be the flow that we're trying to implement. And we want to implement today is we're going to implement a global error handling. So we'll be able to see if there is any problems within our API, we're going to see how we can create a middleware in order for us to capture this error so now let's go back to our source code and what i want to do here is inside the root directory of my application let me close this inside the root directory of my application i'm going to create a directory and i'm going to call this services or i can call it middleware so inside this uh, middleware what i want to do is i want to create a new class and this class i'm going to call it global error handling middleware so once we create this class uh, we're going to have two ways of actually identifying a middleware and we're going to be covering these two ways where we can actually actually there's three but we're going to be mainly focusing on two so the first one which we're going to be using is the following so the first thing that we need to do here is we need to have a request delegate so i'm going to put a private read only request delegate and we're going to be explaining what this is i'm going to call it next then i'm going to have a private read only ilogger in order for us to to be able to log and this is going to be of type global error handling middleware and this is going to be called logger perfect so once we have those now i want to initialize them through the constructor let's initialize them directly through the constructor perfect so once we have done here a logger is self-explanatory request delegate means if we go back to my web browser we're basically handling all of these different requests a request delegate is a way where we can actually handle all of the incoming requests and keeping it in a state where we can actually pass it from one dele from one middleware to another without actually affecting the state of that re incoming request that's a very oversimplification of it we can think about it in a way where we can actually use it to pass requests between middlewares so if we go back here the next item which is going to allow us to actually have a full it's going to allow us to have a full middleware uh, up and running uh, it's going to be the following private async task invoke async and this is going to take a http context we can call it next so we'll call it context and then here what i want to do and this is going to be the main item so if i want to have an empty middleware all i need to do put await underscore next and then pass the context so basically this is a very very empty middleware so what i can do here is i can put logger log info i can say a request has come in so now what i have here is basically i have my skeleton for a middleware i'm telling my class that you might expect a request coming in i define the constructor in order for me to initialize them and then basically once i have done that i have created this method which is going to be a key method here in order for me to pass the request from this middleware to the next one so what i did here is inside if we go back to my web browser inside my actions i basically just added a logging functionality to my middleware i'm not doing anything right now even if there's an error i'm not doing anything except taking the request i'm sending it back and to be honest i'm only adding it when the request coming in i'm not adding it when the request coming out so we'll see how we can do that but first let us execute this or basically enable this so in order for me to actually enable this into my application what i need to do is i need to go to my program.cs and here as as you can see these are all in order so first it goes to http as redirection use authorization that it will go to my controller so if i want to have it for example after the authorization what i want to do is i want to put up dot use middleware and here i can specify the middleware name which it could be global exception handling global error handling middleware and then here this is going to be my middleware so now if i run this okay i have an error this needs to be public apologies so let's stop this and run it again okay so now it's running let me go back to my web browser and here this is going to be my endpoint so i'm just going to do a simple get on the drivers try execute so now we have the driver back but if i go back here and if i take a look into my logs we can see here that a request has come in and basically this is the middleware that we have we're basically 
signing that there's a request coming in and basically the middleware is intercepting because we can see here that the global error the global error handling middleware has fired then we have the logs and then once it has fired then it went back to the controller or the action in order for it to execute and do whatever it needs to do we can see here that this actually has been executed successfully so this has happened before our middleware passed the request so let's see how we can capture an event after it has finished executing so i'm going to put here var so in order for me to make it after it has finished all i need to do is after the await next contact, I can put logger dot log information. I can say the request has completed, for example. And then here, if I run this again, and let's go back to my web browser and let's execute this. And if we go back to the logger, we can see here that I have received a request coming in. And then once everything has executed, I received a request has been completed. And we can see here that the other middle, the middleware is actually executing after my request has been completed. So this means that now I'm adding logging here as well as I'm adding logging here. Okay, perfect. So that's all nice, but that does not cover me right now if something goes wrong. So let's see how we can implement this. So in order for us to do this, we can need to implement here a try catch. So, and this is gonna be self-explanatory. So a try catch basically, it will grab any problems or it will capture any problem that's gonna happen within here. So if there is any uh, exception which has happened within my controller, it will bubble up, it will reach this try catch, and then this exception will be able to capture it. Let's see how we can actually handle it gracefully. So what I can do here, I can put logger dot log error and then here i can pass the error and then i can pass the message and then what i can do also i can define a problem detail so i can say details equal new problem details and then within this problem details i can define my output for example i can say details i can say internal server error and then i can say the instance error i can say status we could be here uh, like 500 and then I can put the title server error again this is all for demo purposes you need to have a bit, much better uh, error handling naming than this but it's only for demo and then once I have the error here what I can do I can actually serialize this I can put var return equal json serializer dot serialize details and then what I need to do is I need to specify the response type that I need to have so in order for me to do this I need to tap into the HTTP contacts that I have. So I'm gonna put contacts.response.status code equal HTTP status code 500, which is gonna be server error, internal server error. And this is gonna be an enum, so I need to make sure I'm casting it to an integer. And then once I have done that, all I need to do at the end is specify the response content type. So I'm gonna put contacts.response content type, and this is gonna be json and lastly i need to attach the response so context dot response dot write async and it's going to be the response and we can await this because it's an async approach and this is going to be it so what i'm doing here actually is i'm saying this is going to be my pipeline if there's any exception happening within my pipeline I'm going to capturing it, I'm logging the error message, and then what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a problem detail, specifying different uh, problems. Again, it depends what I want. I can even make this something like this, e.message. It's not recommended, but I'm just saying it's uh, feasible. Then I'm serializing this object, attaching to the response type and return. So what I'm going to do right now is inside one of my actions, which is going to be my driver's actions for get all, get all driver. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw new exception and i'm gonna say random error and i'm gonna execute this actually before we execute this what i'm gonna do i'm gonna disable the middleware so we can see what's gonna be returned and then we're gonna be seeing with the middleware what's gonna happen so now after i disabled it i'm just gonna execute this go back to my endpoint here go to swagger just do a quick refresh cut drivers execute we can we see in right now we have basically a lot of different information we have a random error we have the stack trace and everything is being returned and this could leak a lot of sensitive information about our application and it's not a really graceful way to handle errors so let's see if we actually enable the middleware so i'm gonna stop this i have enabled the middleware now i'm gonna run it again now i'm gonna go back to my web browser click on execute and see what's gonna happen so now as you can see from this execution what happened instead of getting that big uh, error what i got here is i got my response body i got a 500 and then i got here basically 
the nice response that I have actually specified from within my middleware. I was able to actually make it dynamic enough to make it sure even here with the uh, details, I have specified the random error, which was the message that I specified within my exception. So we can see here I was able to change it from a complete stack trace to whatever I wanted to return inside my uh, body. So that's going to be a really good way to handling exception within it comes to our APIs. So the other way where we can actually create middlewares. So let's see how we can do this right now. Inside my middleware, I'm going to create a different class. I'm going to call it global error handling mid. I can call it whatever I want. The main differences between the first one and the second one here, we could basically had to define our request delegate ourselves. And then we had to initialize it through the constructor and then use it inside the info that in sync. The second way of doing this is going to allow us to utilize an interface called I middleware. And this I middleware is going to require us to actually implement missing members. So once we actually initialize it, all we need to do here is I'm going to go back here. I'm going to take the same body that we have done here. Just copy paste this. So I'm going to copy this, put it here. And basically I need to update this. So I'm going to be needing a logger. So let me add the logger, the logger and let's update it. So this is going to be this one here, this one here, this one here. We don't need the next and we don't need the request delegate anymore. So now that I have my logger in place here, I'm not going to be utilizing the underscore next anymore. So let me update this. I need to make this as an asynchronous approach. I need to add those references back. And then once I have done this, this is going to be my new way to handle a middleware. So we can see here that there's two ways where we can actually define everything myself or I can use utilize the I middleware. There is no really a preference. Um, there is some performance when you utilize the I middleware rather than the other one, but it's very negligible. So it all depends on how you want to utilize it. I don't have a preference to be honest. So the way that you can actually uh, utilize this is going to be a bit different than this, because here we can see we can we directly have injected the middleware into our or basically the service into our middleware. But with the other one, with the interface, we have we need to have an additional step. And this additional step is we need to actually tell ASP.NET uh, that we're going to be having a middleware service to handle this. So I need to put builder services dot add transient. And then from here, I need to specify the interface, which is sorry, the service itself, which is going to be the global error handling mid. So now that I have defined this service inside my services, then what I need to do is I need to update my middleware to use this. So before that, I did not really need to do this step of adding it as transient, but with the other one I have. So now that I have done this, this will stop working. And now I'm just going to say here two, two, two. So we know it's the new one. And then I'm going to execute this. I'm going to go back to my web browser execute. We got back the 500. And if I go back here, we'll be able to see that I have my 222 in place, which is the thing that I have just added. And if I go all the way up, we can also have two AI request has come in. So we can see here that there's multiple ways where I can define a middleware. There's different implementation that I can use in order for me to have a middleware. The main purpose behind the middleware, as we have seen, is to basically intercept the incoming request, add additional logic, either on the way in or the way out. It gives me much more uh, flexibility in order for me to secure my application, uh, have it more robust, and basically have a much more better experience with my performance of my application. So thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe and like. At the end, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.